I know nobody wants to talk about it, but sometimes you just want to be left alone. I know that is rich coming from somebody who spent a fair bit of time chasing down other ships, but I mean, isn't that what piracy is all about? Maximum profit for minimum risk? Nobody wants to put their lives on the line just to be able to pay your rent, so as much as I'm gonna prey on other vessels, I want to make sure that mine stays afloat, especially when I find myself alone on the seas. So how does one go about avoiding combat when outnumbered? Sure, you can lead your enemies to random forts and such in order to use cannon towers against them, but that suggests that you are competent enough to actually land your shots. Which, let's be real, I am not. But what I lack in general intellect, I more than make up for in tenacity. Employing the help of skeleton galleons and other willing pirates is gonna serve me a lot better than trying to do the dirty work myself, and today I want to take you on a journey in which I did exactly that. It's a tough life out there for solo sloopers, so the more tools you have in your arsenal, the better. Which means all you have to do now is set sail, keep your eyes on the horizon, and get ready for another chapter of the Sea of Tales. Now this particular voyage, like many others, began with a very simple goal. Make some money. And it was obvious that I wasn't alone with that desire. Multiple other emissaries were sailing the seas at present, and I was sure that with all of us minding our own business, it would be no sweat. After raising the merchant emissary flag, I went to check on the reaper table as well, and much to my dismay, yes, all these emissaries did attract the attention of a PvP crew. But I wasn't worried. Why would they target a single merchant vessel when there are gold hoarders aplenty? Especially because it seemed like the two factions already had some sort of beef. Just outside the outpost I woke up at, I found a bunch of loot floating about, including not only a Reaper emissary flag, but also a golden key to the Vault of the Ancients? Ever the more reason to believe that they'd have no interest in a slooping merchant like myself. So I purchased a bunch of commodities, made sure to stock up on supplies, and went about my merry way on the Sea of Trades. Now, I was considering using Merfolk Lullaby's merchant route to maximize my profits, but ultimately I decided in favor of just buying what I can and then selling all of it at Murrow's Peak. The cargo run I accepted to level up my emissary flag was bound to be a failure as a storm ruined the goods the moment I took him from Wild Henry, but more annoying than that was that it felt like the storm was chasing me. I eventually got to Ancient Spire to deliver the soaked cargo and pick up some more commodities, but it wasn't until I was done with that busy work that the storm decided to sod off. I repeated the same process at Plun Route Post before heading for Ancient Spire, and a few sails later my level 4 emissary flag had upgraded to the maximum rank 5. By then there was also an active fort of fortune that undoubtedly attracted the attention of other ships on the sea, and I decided to take that opportunity to complete some more cargo runs with my now upgraded flag. But my peaceful trade route money laundering scheme was eventually interrupted when that reaper emissary decided that of all the emissaries on the sea and the fort of fortune, little old me my sloop was the perfect target to attack. Now my initial strategy was to keep the rowboat with the vault key and the emissary flag as a sort of offering to get them off my back, but an unfortunate little accident during my cargo run led to it getting precisely blown off my ship. Speak of unlucky. I had absolutely no intention of engaging in naval battle when I'm hopelessly outgunned, so a quick anchor turn felt like the better option versus running my face into the broadside. Of course, so long that I don't sail against the wind, a brigantine will always catch up to a sloop, and as such, these guys had no reason to give up the chase. Now, if I had nothing on board, then doing set running against the wind would be a great option, but because I had cargo that needed to be delivered to Ancient Spire, which was right in front of me, I had no choice but to try and get these guys off my tail. Boarding them was simple enough, and they were about as attentive as I expected from a crew that clearly outnumbered their prey. But as I was fighting all three of them on my own, it dawned on me that I did not think through the logistics of my anchor drop. Because of my attack led by Reaper-infused muscle memory, I anchored these dudes right in front of the very outpost that I had to sell my goods at! And with no holes to boot, there was no way for me to sink them before they came back from the Ferry of the Damned. Unfortunately, unlike my last solo sleeping adventure, these guys were not yet annoyed enough to stop chasing me after a single last fight. I suppose they realized that as long as I can't put holes in the ship, it doesn't matter how often I send them to the ferry because they will just keep coming back. I could anchor turn all I wanted, but that crew had the requisite tenacity that I would expect from somebody sailing under the flag of the Reaper, which means that I needed a bit more force or a bit more smarts in order to get rid of them. Devil's Ridge has deviously shallow water, so I made an attempt to get them stuck on a sandbank while scouring the line. This would provide the damages I need to sink them while I go for another tussle on their deck, except this time they decided to employ the use of psychological warfare. <laughs> Well,
Well, that went horrible. I was set up for victory, but couldn't help getting distracted by the constant noise they were making. Sword dashing was definitely not the play, and they still managed to avoid the sandbank, meaning the chase was far from over. But only because it didn't work the first time doesn't mean it won't work ever. I would lie if I said that I was trying to get them stuck on that island specifically, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, and this will give me the time to initiate part two of my plan, the Ford of Fortune. Some of you might be wondering how a solo slooper like myself is gonna go about convincing the fellas at the fort to help me fight the reapers, and to that I would say, I don't have to convince them. If that reaper is hell-bent on fighting emissaries, then they won't have a choice but to defend themselves. And if I can get into parlay before they arrive, teaming up with me will be their best option. That's right, my friends, by bringing the reaper to the fort that they are currently clearing, I am creating a problem to which I offer a convenient solution. This brigantine sloop alliance had just completed the fort when I arrived, so I had to scramble and let them know that trouble was on its way. Hello? Hey! Anyone here? That Athena keg in front of me was not the greatest indication of competence, but alas, strength in numbers was the name of the game. Hello? Hello? Hey, I, I need help. There's a Reaper 5 that's chasing me. They've fallen away. Oh, did they? They've been chasing me for half an hour. Well, it seems like taking on three ships at once was a bit scary, even for that tenacious Reaper Brigantine. Awkward as that timing was, I could be of service to my new friends as he requested help in setting fire to a skeleton ship for a commendation. At this point, sailing the seas with pack tactics would be safer than me being on my own, so I joined the Alliance and we went on our way to complete Captain Chicken's commendation, though it didn't take long for the Reaper to notice us breaking away from the fort. Those troopers are here. Yep. Here by us. They sure are. Be careful. An epic battle commenced. It isn't often that I see four ships engaging in naval battle, and even if one of them was of the Calcium variety, it was still an impressive sight to behold. The Skelly Galleon was actually the most fearsome competitor in this fight, landing the most shots on each of our vessels, and it seemed like Captain Chicken was not gonna let the Reaper stop him from setting it ablaze in order to complete his commendation. Truly inspirational. Needless to say that our friend had traded his sloop to make that happen, but hey, we still get that brigantine that will come and help us any second now, right? Um, no, actually these these cowards were already on their way to Galleon's grave to sell the fort's riches without even getting involved in that fight. Well, I had no intention of following Captain Chicken's example, so I took my ship and set sail through the damn storm that decided to come back to reunite with my alliance. The selling had already been in full effect as I was fighting my way through the weather, and luckily for me, said weather also worked in my favor because the Reaper did not feel inclined to follow me through it. Well, I suppose this went about as well as it could have. Captain Chicken sacrificed his empty ship to fend off the Reapers in order to allow us to flee, and everyone was contending with our friends selling the loot while still under the alliance. It wasn't an all-out victory, to be honest, but if surviving was the goal and running away was the means by which we tried to achieve that, I guess there's no reason to complain. But if you want to see what a proper PvP-focused alliance between Reapers looks like, what about you check out my last episode in which we achieved exactly that? It is quite the opposite from this whole running away business, so if you are interested in that, feel free to check out the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea and until next time, peace.